Eurovision family, we have our 25 countries that will be performing tomorrow in the big finale. And there's a clock right behind me and you probably have a countdown clock at home as well. So do you have your snacks ready? Do you have your polls? And do you have your friends? Because the Eurovision final is about to happen, but there's still a day left and we have loads to discover here at Eurovision Backstage. I am here in the lovely open air with Swedish contestant Cornelia. Hello. Hello. How do I properly pronounce your last name? Well, um, you can choose actually, but I usually say Cornelia Jacobs, but in Swedish, it says my name is Cornelia Jakobsdotter. It's like uh, I have taken away the dotter, yes. yes. Why did you decide to do Melody Festival in the first place? And what made you want to go to Eurovision? In the beginning, why, why I even uh, went to Melody Festival was because of my friend who's actually here. She's creative director and we're doing like uh, all the creative stuff except the music together. So all music videos and like styling and stuff like that. She suddenly like, shouldn't you do a Melody Festival? And I was like, because <sighs> it's scary with those type of like it's so big and you lose control because you usually when you do everything yourself you can like control everything in every step and then I started to think about it and I was like oh my core love for music is to play live uh, I really just want to like tour uh, and she was like you can do this and then you can tour how much you want and I was like oh that's right <laughs> Ooh, so maybe I will overcome this little fear for this hugeness and and just do it so I'm super happy that I did it and now I'm here which is like the biggest thing I can imagine why anyone wouldn't want to do this because it's the most fun thing I've ever done can you tell me something about the performance that you did at Melody Festival like how did that happen and come together mm -hmm. this fall when I uh, when I've got to the info that I was gonna be participating uh, I started to like really try to visualize I sat and like like this in my living room and like just listen to the song and try to think and first I just had uh, so many ideas that I tried to fit in one <laughs> song and I was like and then this happens and then I changed dress to this and you know just really you wanted to change your dress yes it was just like I start this and over there and then there comes a stare from the sky lifting you know just too much of everything too much too much <laughs> uh, and then I had to like uh, sleep on that for a while and then I was like no nah, I think it's too much Cornelia yeah sleep uh, on the flying staircase uh, yeah yes yes exactly and then uh, I started to like take things away uh, and every time I took something away I felt like like oh, and like instant relief so I was like hmm maybe this is telling me something so I found this like um, circular light thing on in, uh, like inspiration thing on um, Pinterest and I instantly it's always Pinterest <laughs> yes and I instantly felt like felt like oh I, I really vibe the circle uh, to, to this song I don't know why but I feel maybe that the sunrise song, maybe the circle mm, changing of the colors uh, yeah maybe I, I was just I felt that the song feels circular in some way and I felt instantly that I wanted it to be green and then uh, red in the end because the song is quite subtle in the beginning and like more accepting and and then throughout the journey it like burns out in some kind of volcano outburst in the end and it gets more frustrating and like uh, passionate uh, so then I wanted it to be become red. Well now you're part of Eurovision history forever. That's crazy! Ah. You're in the Eurovision canon. Canon? Yeah, it's a canon, like the, you, that's what you call like a history of something. Ooh. Like the Eurovision canon. Ooh. Yeah. I've never heard that. And then you'll shoot for the stars. Ooh. Tiny word joke. Ooh. Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, I hope you get to do so many live shows. Yeah. And one of the best parts of being at Eurovision is that you're welcome whenever. You can just come back because you'll always be a Eurovision artist. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Good luck. Thank you so much. This was such a cozy little yeah, chat nice. out in the green. It's nice. Yeah. I feel really relaxed now. Mm. It can be really stressful inside. I know, it's the loud, mu loud volume of all the uh, it's chatting, chatting. All the everything. Yeah, yeah, all the everything inside. My name is Anna-Lisa and I'm delegation host here at Eurovision. And my Italian word for today is finalissima, which means grand final. I'm here with legend. I'm a sister. <laughs> Samia Hussawi, Lorint Al Hawi. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam, ya How are you? Have you been? It's been 10 years of euphoria. You have a new single coming out on the yeah. 13th of May. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, honey. It feels great. I mean, it feels surreal. 10 years. It's passed so fast. It feels like it was yesterday. My God. Because you've been acting in a Netflix film, you've never stopped making music. Mm. How has your journey been throughout these Eurovision years, and what does Eurovision mean to you still? Oh, my God. 
the Eurovision was basically my, my step into the world. It was that platform that basically took me in. And, you know, it's the Eurovision that basically been opening a lot of doors for me. And you have new music out, Neon Lights. Would right. you mind telling me about your new sound and this new era for your music? So after Euphoria, I started to tour a lot, you know. And it was during that time my musical identity started to emerge and you know crystallize itself if i if i listen to how i sounded back in the days and how i sound now you can tell my heritage yeah vocally you know has has grown this new single is a is a mashup of my heritage and since i'm a nerd when it comes to synths i am a studio nerd really I like i love analog synths you know and i just love this this whole uh, i call it terminator futuristic sound and so i've mashed that with the moroccan in me basically because it's been 10 years a lot of artists and fans started their love of eurovision with you and the impact of euphoria do you feel that in some way do you still get people coming up to you and saying you meant so much to them or they play your song every single year like do you still get those stories i do they mean a lot to me because it, it's it's a very beautiful and, and still I I'm not allowed to sing this song all by myself when I play it live can you imagine 10 years later I'd be like can I please get to sing my song from the beginning to the end alone no <laughs> no but so yeah people come up and they tell their stories where they were at the time where you know some people get married and I get you know whatever euphoria to me symbolizes intuition you see because it was a struggle before that and to to create the performance and there were a lot of people at the beginning that didn't believe in my idea because it was so controversial at the time you know I, you can't imagine that possibly now but yeah no you no you can't but but at, at the time you know all of these details like for instance the siren in the beginning you know They're like, oh my God, you've destroyed the song. I'm like, no, we need to neutralize the room. So what happens? Why did we have the siren in the beginning? Because there are a lot of energies going on. There's one song there, there's one song there. When this thing starts, it needs to have, it, it needs to start, you know, you need like to- Like a palate cleanser. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that is what happens when you have a siren like that. Bah, it just neutralizes everything. And I basically said that it's either this way with every, all of these details or I'm out. Or you walk away. <laughs> or I walk away. <laughs> because people forget that. Yeah, a lot of Eurovision artists have a big team. There's people from the uh, host, the, your broadcaster, there's people from the label maybe, yeah. there's yeah. PR people. Yeah. So it's not just, but then the audience sees just the artist on stage. Yeah. So was it really like a long process to, to get Euphoria exactly the way you wanted it? The thing is, I was I was in the Swedish competition before Melody Festival. Exactly, and so and that that performance was a compromise, and it was so painful for me because I I, I lost, but that wasn't the painful part. The painful part was that it wasn't according to my vision. I compromised, so the second time they asked me, I said, "I'll do this, but I have one term. I am going to create a performance, and you will not be involved." What I mean when I say not involved, I will come when the performance is basically finished. So I did all of the details with one person, she's with my choreographer Ambra. And so I created this performance and nobody saw it until it was finished. There was no time to do any changes, you know. But I, but I had certain rules, like at the time I, I told them I don't want to know anything about what anybody thinks of me, anything about what anybody writes about me, and my team respected my rules. I don't want to know how the competition works and I still today don't know. I didn't know that I won at the po at the moment when you know when people started sharing. I remember that I, I leaned over to my producer like so um, are the people gonna vote now? He's like are you kidding me? You won man! Get up on stage! You know? <laughs> I'm gonna do it again, and you know I was. And for the next ten years, you're so gonna do it again. Yeah, I'm like I was so stressed out because I was thinking about all these details. Oh my god, I'm gonna do it again. Where is my stuff, Mama? <laughs> you know. And you did it perfectly. Thank you so much. We're so excited for your new music oh, and this new journey and this new era. Thank and I hope you. everyone keeps following you, oh, thank you, and also sings along, sings along with Euphoria. But oh. inshallah, also with all of you in your work. Ah, oh, thank you, darling. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry I was a bit tired, like in the beginning. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Hello, we are Alvan and Ais. 
We are representing France this year with our song Fulen. And you're watching the Eurovision backstage. Tomorrow is the grand final for Eurovision 2022. By the time you see my face for a fresh video, I will be interviewing the winner on stage. Also, this is the last regular episode of Eurovision Backstage. We have loved making this series for you and we have read every single nice comment. Thank you so much from Roy and myself. We will see you for the last time, for this season at least, tomorrow. Bye-bye.